Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna keep on that. But that's a good one. Man, look at all this stuff. I did not bring enough money. Hey everyone, Mac here, and I just got back in from RetroCon last night. And this is some of my haul. I don't have everything set up here because a lot of the stuff that I bought is going to end up being Christmas presents, and I don't want to ruin that. So just right here, we have a couple of buttons. We have Symbiote Collectibles, who was one of the vendors there at RetroCon. Bought some stuff off of him, and he just threw this button in. Then, of course, there's the RetroCon button that you get for pre-registering, which is kind of cool. I like how it has the font is made up from all kinds of different uh, vintage toys, like you got uh, Transformers, He-Man, Voltron, Tron, uh, Back to the Future. I'm not, can't really pin down what the two O's are, but it's a pretty cool design. And of course the Tron game grid in the background. Now a lot of what I bought for myself actually ended up being minifigs down here. And I wasn't expecting that, but there was a lot of minifigs to choose from and I wanted to pick them up. The first one here isn't a Lego minifig, this is Snow Job from G.I. Joe. And G.I. Joe is one of the Creo lines. And in the last show and tell video I did, I talked about uh, Creo, the ill-fated attempt that was Creo. And one of the lines they had was G.I. Joe. And I do have some of the G.I. Joe sets. As a matter of fact, that's the one that I'm collecting. That's the one that I am actively collecting the most is the G.I. Joe sets from Creo. So I was really happy to find Snow Job out in the wild because you don't really find these Joe, um, these Joe pieces, especially the Creons, they're minifigs too often. The main reason being, I believe anyway, is that when they came out with the individual figures, everything was blind bag. You didn't know what you were getting. You couldn't just go out and say, hey, I want to buy Snow Job or hey, I want to buy Storm Shadow. Hey, I want to buy Zaymot, you had to just buy a, bind, a blind bag and hope. And I don't remember, honestly, I've never actually seen uh, one of the blind bags to know if there was codes that you could look up on them, but that, that would just be annoying to me. Like why they didn't just sell the minifigs individually in open, in open um, blister packs or just include all figs in the, um, all the Creons in the sets. I don't know, but I was happy to find Snow Job because you don't see him too much. So there's that. Out of all of the mini figs that I have down here, I honestly think like one or two of them are actually official Lego mini figs. So let's start with the ones that I know. I know this is an official Lego mini fig. This is Nightwing, and he was originally sold with one of the Lego. A Lego Justice League movie. I can't remember which one it was. But I didn't buy the movie, but I wanted the Nightwing minifig, so I was real happy one of the vendors had him loose. I like him. I like I, I like this uh, style of the uniform, the black with the blue on it. I didn't like the black with red too much. I like this color motif. He has the two translucent rods to use as his batons. His hairpiece, and he does have two two face printing. He has, you know, his angry face. And of course, his Dick Grayson smirk on back. And if you look here, he has some pretty decent back printing for him. Nothing real complex, just up here on the back of the torso. Another one that I know is definitely Lego is Santa Vader. And this was obviously from one of the uh, Star Wars advent calendars. He wasn't something that I was actually looking for. I didn't even realize how much I wanted him until I saw him. Because it made me laugh. I like the um, I like the coat opened up. I like the green around his belt. Uh, the helmet does come off. There's a head in there. But the head is stuck inside the helmet right now. And I just haven't pried it out yet. I also like the gold sack that he comes with. And the white gloves. 
And this was just, this was just cute. This just amused me. That was the main reason I picked this up. Ahsoka here. Ahsoka Tano. I know Lego made an Ahsoka Tano figure. But I also know there's um, knockoffs of figures that Lego makes. And usually if Lego makes a figure, I try to buy the actual Lego figure, not the knockoff. It wasn't until, actually, I, I got home last night and I was taking a good look at these that I started to suspect that Ahsoka might be the knockoff because I don't think she came with the green sabers. I think Ahsoka came with a yellow, yellow translucent rods for the lightsabers. Also, she does have two face printing, but the printing doesn't look like it's Lego printing. I'm not sure why, and it might be the eyes. Once again, the back printing is very basic. Um, so I'm not sure if this is the official Ahsoka or if this is a knockoff Ahsoka. Either way, I like it. I like Ahsoka as a character. I liked, um, I liked what they did with her in the Clone Wars series. Her return is really the only thing that's making me think about um, looking into the new season of Clone Wars that's coming out. I like that. Everything else down here, I know, is a knockoff. And let's start... Well, and once again, Scarlet Witch. I know Lego makes a Scarlet Witch minifig. And when I first saw this one on the shelf and I just snagged it up and bought it, I thought this was, you know, Lego. But I'm not entirely sure now because like Ahsoka, I know that they make a knockoff. Somebody makes a knockoff Scarlet Witch. And I think these are the giveaway because I'm pretty sure in the official um, Lego Marvel minifig, she didn't come with the blasting pieces. She came with those translucent discs that represented her uh her magic i don't think she had the the launch pieces but i still like it i like the paint job i like the paint that go once again the back very basic just showing the back of her coat focus and she only has one face printing which is another thing that makes me think this is the knockoff because i'm pretty sure the lego variant or the lego version has dual printing has two uh face prints I'm not sure, I've never seen that one up close, but I liked Scarlet Witch. She was one of, she is one of the Avengers that I really like um, from the MCU movies. And I'm not, honestly, not a big fan of the MCU movies. They're just all starting to, they're very interchangeable. You could take any hero out of any movie, drop him into the main plot of another movie, and nothing's going to change. That's, that's just how I feel about them, so. Now that the game is over, I don't think I'm going to be diving too much into Phase 4. This one is definitely a knockoff, but I kind of dig it that I wanted a Supergirl minifig and to the best of my knowledge right now, the only Supergirl minifig they make is the one that came um, limited edition Lego Dimensions for the, uh, the PlayStation. This, this is too dark to fuck, there we go. This is a Supergirl CW series variant of the minifig which i know is a knockoff and you can tell by the face printing because the face printing is not up to par with lego whoop, with lego face print and the hair does stick to the head uh, uh, come on, come on, there we go and once again she only has a, a single face print but the uniform is much darker the cape is much darker the cape actually even has like a velvet texture to it on back um, and she has dark coloring between the skirt and the boots to represent the, uh, the nylon leggings that she wears. And I don't know if you can see it real well on the camera, but here on the torso, she does have, let me see if I can focus on that. She does have the, uh, the red piping on the torso. I can't, I don't know if you can see that like she has in the CW series. So I like this version of the, fit of the minifig. I know, I know it's not Lego official, but I do like that figure. And as I said, if you watch the Ares video, there are many figures that uh, Lego doesn't like to touch because of being a little too dark or a little too gritty. And what else is darker and grittier than Two-Face and Candyman? <laughs> I'm sorry, not Two-Face, Pinhead, oh wow. Sorry, sorry, still a little tired from the drive. 
Pinhead and Candyman. Uh, the Candyman series, I'm not very familiar with. I've never seen any of the movies. I know what the plot is. I'm, f I'm, I'm familiar with Candyman. They came together in the same bag. Pinhead is the reason that I picked the bag up, because Hellraiser is my favorite of the monster genre. I love that it even comes with the puzzle box. And... Got the hood printing on back. The, the Cenobite work, the painting up front, the paint deco up front, even Candyman's deco, if you look at it. Candyman's deco is really good, too. Ah, sorry, the camera is not wanting to work today. Ah, focus. Mm. There we go. But Pinhead is my favorite of the monsters. Funny story, I've actually met Doug Bradley, the, the gentleman who plays Pinhead. Um, he's friends with a friend of mine who I perform on stage with, and a couple Halloweens ago, he came to see a show I was in when I was playing Dracula, and him, and his girlfriend, and me, and um, our mutual friend all went out to dinner, so it was kind of cool. It was really cool hanging out with him at, at Halloween. Pinhead and Dracula, out for food. So there's those. I, I really like this fig. I really like the look of this. I'm glad I was able to find that. This was something that was never made by Lego. It's Green Lantern, the Alan Scott Green Lantern uh, from the Golden Age. He comes with his... I, I don't know why Lego doesn't do this for their Green Lantern figures, actually giving them like this little power ring here. This is supposed to be his lantern. And you can see the arm is a little loose, so I'm going to tighten that up. But I really like, I really like the color. I've always liked the color of Scott's Green Lantern costume. The colors look like they shouldn't go together, but they do. And I love how the, the cape is purple on the outside and green on the inside. The green leggings, the, the, the print work, the paint deco of his shirt, the purple mask. I don't know if there's any back printing. I didn't even look. Yeah, very basic. Very basic back printing for him. But I really like this fig. I knew this one. I knew this one existed. Uh, this is the first time I saw it in the wild, so I picked it up. Mm. You can see these pieces are real loose. Once again, only one face print. But that's all you need. It looks good. The hairpiece looks good, too. So I like that one. And this was one, he came in the bag with Alan Scott, otherwise I wouldn't have picked him up. I think he's supposed to be the Ryan Reynolds movie incarnation of the Green Lantern. Uh, man, sorry, the camera does not... There we go. The Ryan Reynolds movie incarnation of Green Lantern. And he has some decent printing to him. Um, you can see his second face is peeking out from underneath his hairpiece. And the, the, the face printing in general on this just does not stack up to what Lego can do. That one's not bad, but that one, that one's not good. As a matter of fact, if I turn this one around, you see how the mouth is a little bit lower. I put that on, does it? Yeah, that one hides it. So maybe I'll just have to keep him like that. But let's be honest, I'm really not going to display this one. He came with, that's supposed to be his ring, but it's just a green translucent plate piece. I'm not really going to display him. He just came with Alan Scott, and that's the only reason why I got him. And then these two. I honestly didn't know these two existed as a knockoff, but I had to get them. Freddy and Bowie. Freddie Mercury and David Bowie. Two great musical legends that <laughs> were actually taken from us in a very short amount of time uh, between each other. So... Freddy in one of his more iconic suits, and Bowie from his uh, Iggy, Ziggy Stardust days, and I love the lightning bolt. Only one face print on those. The, the coloring isn't bad. The plastic on these two feels very, very cheap. You can tell these were uh, cheaply done knockoffs, but there's the back printing. But because of who they were, I had to pick them up. All right, that's it for the minifigs. While I was there, I also ended up buying a lot more art than what I was expecting. The first pieces I bought were these watercolors over here. And this is by, these two pieces are by Marcos MP Art. And he has some really good stuff uh, you should check out. I'm going to put a link to everybody I talk about 
in the description below. But definitely check him out on Instagram. Check out his work. See what he can do. Really good artist. And there were two pieces, three actually, that I found out about, but two pieces that I wanted. This was the last Megatron that he had on his stand when I uh, saw him. The Megatrons went pretty quickly. And I picked up the last one because just, just look at that. That's like an iconic pose for Megatron. I love the purple energy spilling out of the, the, the arm cannon. And that just looks so good. Definitely got to frame that one. And then there was this, and this was, again, the last piece. I think he only actually made one, and no one had bought it. I mean, look at look how good that looks. Look at how good Adam West looks in this print. This, this is so, so iconic of Adam West. The only thing that upsets me about this is that when I picked this up, he said that he had a Cesar Romero Joker print that went with this. But, like, just before I came over to his stand and I had grabbed this, someone had bought the Romero print without buying the Adam West Batman print. And I was like, how could you buy one without the other? When I found out about that, I actually ended up walking around the rest of the day to see if I could find anybody that was carrying the Romero print that went with this. And I was going to offer to buy it off of them just so that I could have the set. He only had one of each. He'd only made one of each. And I really wanted the, the, the Cesar Romero Joker to go alongside this because it would be it would be look really good in like a double frame. Have like West over here and uh, Caesar's uh, Caesar Romero's Joker in another frame uh, right here. But I got I got Adam the Adam West Batman, so I was real happy about that. Uh, these next couple pieces are might be too big to show on camera, so I may just do. Rory and Amy Pond. This is a really big piece. Uh, let me see. This is a really good piece. And I love that Rory is in his gladiator armor, his Roman centurion armor from uh, the Pandorica. Sorry, my opinion. Amy Pond was the best companion. These were the best two companions. I liked Amy better. Jenna Coleman was around too long. and She wasn't that good. Fight me. Amy's my favorite. And he had one of these prints with Amy and Rory. And I was really happy to get it. This was by, uh, I believe, he didn't have a business card, but I have his website written down somewhere. I believe he is uh, the, the Geek Boy, the Geek Boy Art. Um, I'll have his website linked below as well. He has a really cool um, style. Check him out. And then this next one, um, C Dub, C, C D of Art. I don't even, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, but it's basically the art of Chris Williams. And when I saw his work, the uh, first thing I thought was, this guy reminds me of Todd McFarlane in his early days when he was working on Venom and Spider Man. And look at that. He does a lot of mashup prints. Scarlet, Princess from Battle of the Planets, G-Force. There's the Phoenix up here. That's the, uh, the, the, the G.I. Joe base in the background. Just look at how good that is. That is fantastic. That is really good work. And he signed, he signed all the prints. I bought three prints off of him. The other one is this. This foil Chitara print that is just fantastic. I don't know if the camera is doing it justice right now, but this this just really radiates golden with the amount of gold that he used for the background, Chitara's fur. Um, I can't really get, I'll take pictures of these and, and post them. Uh, the it, It's just so good. The, the foil print, the, the camera's not doing the foil print justice. And then last, for what I got from him, was another mashup. If you have, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this. I posted this already as soon as I got it. Chitara and She-Ra, Hordak's head, Mumra laid out. He signed it here. And Melody Britt was at RetroCon. She signed the cape. 
So this is signed by the artist, the original voice of She-Ra, and then hopefully I'll be able to find a convention where Lynn, I can't remember her last name right now, unfortunately, the voice of Chitara is going to be, and I'll get her to sign this side, and that will just be this, this piece. As soon as I saw this, I knew I had to get this, and especially with Melody being there, I knew I had to get this one so that she could sign this one. There is another version of this that he has. He made two versions of this. He made what he called the PG version, which is this, and an R-rated version, which is basically Chitara and She-Ra are just covered in blood from Hordak and Mumra. And that does look really good. As a matter of fact, you can see like this, this up here, these liquid spots, that's all blood on the sword. And the piece does look really good, but I knew if I was going to have Melody sign it, and then eventually Lynn hopefully sign it, that I, I didn't want to have that, that bloody print. I wanted, I wanted to see the, the two characters clean. Um, that's, I, that, that's probably one of my favorite pieces. This, this right here is probably one of my favorite pieces, and this is one of my favorite things that happened. She was such a sweetheart. Oh man, she was so sweet to meet. You know how they say sometimes? You know how they say sometimes you shouldn't meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed? If you ever meet Melody Britt, you will not be disappointed. Oh, she was so good to talk to. She actually, she signed that. She took time. She talked to me. Um, we talked about She-Ra. We talked about how much She-Ra meant to me. We talked about um, our favorite moments in the She-Ra series, which, interestingly enough, and I realized she may have just been saying this because I was a fan, but it turned out that we have the same favorite moment in the show. And it was just really cool getting to talk to her. Uh, by the time I got that signed, it was towards the end of the convention. So everybody who was going to get things signed by her had already come and gone. So there was no line behind me. So I, I was able to just hang out and talk to her. And that was really cool. She's such a sweetheart. If you have a chance to meet her, I highly recommend doing it. Next, we have this. Tron 2.0. I don't know anything about this character. I do like Tron, but this is a... Uh... Real Toys. This is from the... I believe there's an animated series that came out, and that's what this is from. I don't know anything about it. I didn't buy this. This was actually a door prize from a um, Name That Tune contest that they had. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Maybe I'll give it away in a contest. Maybe I'll sell it on my Patreon. Or Patreon. I don't have Patreon. Maybe I'll sell it on my Etsy store. Or I'll probably just give it away. We'll see. But there was that. Something else that I found. Unopened. I'm not sure. Like, I almost feel bad about opening it. But I, I do that. I'm not a closer. I like to open things up. This uh, set 40223. This limited edition Christmas set. That if you're a follower of the channel and you watched it last Christmas. You saw that I got a little carousel that came out last year. I'm not sure what the date is on this. I don't think there is a date on this. So I'm not sure what year this one came out. I forgot to look it up before I started this video. But you can tell this snow globe, uh, I love this little drawer that opens up down here. But this snow globe is gonna look so good next to the carousel. And I'm really looking forward to putting that together this, this Christmas. I found some mega construction when I was out there in the wild. I've been wanting to start a World of Warcraft collection. And I was really happy to find this because this, the gyrocopter, I do play World of Warcraft and this gyrocopter right here, this is one of my favorite flying mounts of the game. So I was glad that the first piece that I found was this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy putting that together. And the big piece that I found is this guy right here. Not only is this the transporter room from the original series, it's the transporter room from the mirror universe of the original series. You can see the symbols of the Terran Empire in back. Evil Spock with the goatee. Evil Kirk with the, with the no sleeves. This character is really cool. That's Scotty. And the way that they've painted him, he is in mid-transport. So that, there we go. So that's going to be really cool. Also, the transporter room unfolds and opens up, and you can use it as a, as a display stand for other figures. 
which is also cool. And the only thing I've had for Mega Construct, oh, this isn't Mega Constructs, I'm sorry, this is even Mega Blocks. This is before they became Mega Constructs or changed their name over. And I've been, once again, just like with the World of Warcraft, I've been wanting to start collecting the, um, I've been wanting to get the collection of the Mega Blocks original series, Star Trek. And I was glad, oh, I was so glad to find this piece, because I've never even seen this. I didn't know it existed. As soon as I saw it, I just snagged it. I didn't haggle. I didn't do anything. I just paid him whatever he wanted because I didn't want anybody else to snag it. And on the back, you have a cross cell that, like, I have to find the bridge. The, I, I really want the bridge. I really want that, the Guardian of Tomorrow. Not entirely sure what that is. I think that might be the engine room, but also... Klingon D7, the cruiser. There's also a Enterprise that is kind of like a uh, Master Builder's Enterprise that comes with the display stand, and once again, it comes with uh, different versions of Kirk and Spock. So, there's my first piece, not counting the um, two mini action figures that I had in the last show and tell. But that was my haul. That was what I can show you from what I brought back from RetroCon. I had a lot of fun there. There was a lot of great people there. Like I said, met Melanie Britt. Had a really good one-on-one um, -on -one conversation with Dan Larson from Toy Galaxy about the future of toy collecting. He answered my questions, took time out. Was a really good guy to talk to. Um, oh, 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 there was also um, Tim Clark was there who worked on the, the Dark Crystal. He also created Sectars and he created um, the Boglins. He is self-manufacturing and selling from his store online. You should check him out. Really, I mean, he worked for Henson Studios. I don't have to tell you how talented he is, but check out his website, see what you can find. Uh, Symbiote Collectibles, they'll ha I'll have their link down below. Uh, they're the ones that gave me the pin and I bought some stuff off of them. Retro Future Coffee. This gentleman, um, Anthony, he makes uh, he makes his own coffees that have themes to like old nostalgic '80s uh, '80s themes. I mean, even just look at his symbol. <laughs> that's Tron with the ID disc, but that's a coffee bean that's coming down. I bought some off of him. I woke up with it this morning. It was really good. You should check him out. This was, this was cool. I didn't know this organization existed. The Finest. Uh, if you're familiar with the 501st, but not the Finest, the 501st is a Star Wars cosplay group that basically, they're stormtroopers, they're the Empire. The Finest is a uh, G.I. Joe cosplay group, and they're all volunteers. Some of them are vets. Everything they do is for free. They take donations, and all of the money that they raise, I'm not sure if it says on any of these cards, no, but all of the money that they raise, 100% of the proceeds that they raise, go to Canines for Vets. And I'll put a link to their website down below. I had a long, I had a really good talk with them. They, they were just cool to hang out with and talk to. Um, they all have, they all have a card, like for cosplay. They all have like their own trading card with the old style, the, the vintage style file cards on the back of it. So check them out. They, they, they should, you should definitely check them out there. It's a really good organization. The RetroCon was just great and I can't wait to go back. And if you have a chance to go, definitely go. And that's really about all I got for you today. So please remember, like, share, comment, subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, Ring the bell so that you always get notified when I post a new video. Play well, everybody. And as always, thank you for watching.